Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Josh here from Polymathics, and today we're going to talk about keeping it short and simple. And what I'm talking about is your resume. So, um, and this is part of the About Face series, which is something I'm pulling together to help military veterans navigate their way through their transition to the civilian sector. And um, hopefully some of these things that I bring to light will um, make your transition easier and or, or possibly just help you, you know, dodge the many pitfalls that we all seem to uh, have as we go through this time. So one of the big things that we all have to do, unfortunately, is resumes. And resumes, I mean, there are so many just with resumes alone so many topics that we could go into um, but as you guys will see throughout the the course of you know this <clears throat> online series and, and other videos that I do I'm not a very big proponent of resumes I don't think they're as important they're still necessary don't get me wrong but I don't think they're as important as um, as other things that you could do, pardon my voice, for uh, your job transition. <clears throat> so, um, but in particular today, what I want to talk about is keeping your resume short and sweet. Now, when we look at a resume, a lot of us lose sight of what the purpose of the resume is. The purpose of the resume is to build interest. It's to build interest so that someone will call you and give you an interview. Okay? It's not to tell your life story. And the best example I can give of this, people who have got this down to a T, who have mastered this over several years, is Hollywood. For any of you who have watched the movie, which I'm assuming is all of you, right? Think of whatever your favorite movie is or, or whatever, and, and think about the trailers that came out for it, right? Like the trailers, the, the intended purpose is to build interest, to get you so hooked so quickly that you're chomping at the bit to see this movie. And how many times have you seen a trailer that just looked amazing and you went and saw the movie and you were so pumped and then well that movie wasn't that great so my point isn't that I like I'm not saying that you should not be great what I'm saying is you want a trailer that can invoke so much interest in the employer that they want to talk to you they want to spend some time with you they want to see whether or not your movie is good or bad and then it's on you to provide something that they can't live without. But that's for another video. Um, but when we look at trailers, what do they do? They give us some high-level, quick shots of what the movie is about. They don't go into detail. They don't give us a life story or an exposition, right? It's very quick and and concise and so um, you want to hit on the big points the major selling points like what is it that you provide that no one else can provide what is it that you have that's going to make things easier for their company you have to get inside the mind of the employer and, and think like okay you know what is his what are the things that that the company that their goals what are their fears what is it that you and only you can help them with what is it that you and only you bring to the table and some of these things can be intangible you know the ability to build teams and work well with others right the ability to take initiative and and build a plan and, and and take action with tasks. These are these are some some of these things, you know, 
anybody, let's put it this way, anybody or just about anybody can use a computer and can learn a program, right? That's your competition. Everybody can do that. What they're looking at is what can you do aside from that that makes you better? Why are you the best person for this job? And in later videos, I'll talk about how you can set yourself up to be the expert or the guru or the go-to guy for certain things because that's what you want to be because that's where you stand out. That's where you can say, I'm the only person who can give you this. I'm the only person who can provide this for you, right? And, um, and there's several different aspects. But um, so when you do your resume, don't spend a lot of time. Military member, not just everybody, right? Anybody who's looking for a new job. Spend hours and hours and hours crafting, drafting, revising, um, and sending out m multiple resumes. Some of these things are like three pages long. That's crazy. For any of you who have been to job fair or met with employers, right? Sat down with a hiring manager. Nine times out of ten, they barely even looked at the sheet of paper. It's a bunch of words to them. They don't even care. It says on the on the, the paper, you know, the duty title that you're looking for. Manager. Okay, got it. Or systems engineer. Okay, got it. They're look they look at that and they say, okay. And whether they're the recruiter who's looking at it or the, the HR rep and they're looking at it and they're saying, okay, skill sets, I see, okay, this is someone I'll hand off. They're not looking for a novel. They're looking for some quick keywords, you know, that they've been told to identify. Then once they see that, they're going to bring you in. The other thing to keep in mind, and this is another reason why I don't think you should spend as much time on a resume is no matter what happens, a sheet of paper is not going to get you a job. A computer is not going to get you a job. The only thing that's going to get you a job is a person. So you have to craft your resume so that a person will be interested. Not a computer, not another sheet of paper. And, and, you know, going back to the job fairs thing, if you look at all these HR reps and hiring managers and things, when they, when they have at the end of the day or, you know, as they're sitting through, they've got stacks sometimes, right? And I guarantee you they don't want to look at a three-page resume. They want to look at something quick, short, and sweet that has the key items that they're looking for. That goes into the interview pile. Then after that, that's when you have to say, okay, you know, where is it that I can stand out that they for the things that they need? And that, that will be discussed in later videos. So, anyways, um, I'll leave you with this. For those of you who are superhero nerds, um, comic book geeks, you know, take a look at some of the recent trailers um, for anything that's come out in like the last two or three years, you know, like Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises, Superman, Spider-Man, <clears throat> Spider-Man, X-Men, uh, Days of Future Past. When you look at those trailers, they're giving you intense action right up front. And they're not going into great detail. They're just giving you enough to kind of get you salivating and wanting it so that you go and see the movie. So I hope that you guys, um, I hope that this has been helpful. Maybe you guys can sit down, look at your resume, and, and if you've got a two or three pager, start cutting. Cut, cut, cut. And the best way to do this um, is to take a look at it from a strategic standpoint. If I'm going for a job that's looking for managerial skills, then I can cut all of the analyst stuff. I can cut all the system engineering if I need to make room. Now, if you need stuff on there, like a page is a good amount, then keep it on there. But if you've got three pages worth, start cutting all the stuff that, that doesn't relate to what the company is looking for or the position that you're going for. 
Um, anyways, so I hope this helps. Um, if you guys have any questions, if I haven't addressed anything, or I haven't been clear, then leave some comments in the field below, and I'll and I'll try to get back to you as as best I can. But um, until next time, you know, stay bold, stay strong. Good luck with your transition. You're gonna do fine. You're gonna land on your feet. You know, just take it one step at a time. All right, take it easy.